TCP data streams and the connection states, states how big TCP is it clear my argument like this are you facing any problem is it clear my argument video can anyone of you respond please In TCP layer of UDP and uh, uh, TCP data are forming TCP data streams. How exactly TCP data streams are communicating and the connection states and packet delivery. How exactly packet delivery is happening with respect to and or management also. And we have discussed the mechanisms for the flow control and the conjunction control also. And uh, uh, we have discussed some problems while facing the, uh, with the help of TCP while transmission the data in a network with, within the uh, mobile networks. And the modifications, some modifications, uh, required modifications we have discussed about TCP for uh, wireless and mobile networks. Uh, by splitting this TCP, we can direct TCP and uh, mobile TCP. Mobile TCP method, uh, we can discuss now about this TCP mobile methods. And TCP or wireless uh, using TCP link layer solutions, uh, we are in a position to overcome the errors and the snooping of our TCP we have for monitoring the uh, no, data link layer and to overcome the errors and fast retransmitter and fast recovery and timer freezing transmissions methods today we will discuss with the uh, mobile TCP methods and explicit notifications method selective transmission and uh, transmission oriented TCP methods these methods and all we will discuss and how exactly we are using our TC networks, 2G networks, that thing we will discuss now. And uh, user data protocol, we know about that uh, header and uh, which type of in which type of communication we should go with the UDP protocol and all we know. And uh, TCP protocol, when we should use the this uh, conventional TCP protocol. With the type of uh, which type of uh, data transmissions we should go with the uh, TCP protocol and all we know. And the functionalities of uh, conventional TCP protocols, functionalities of uh, conventional TCP protocols like uh, uh, transmission as data streams, means TCP data is always uh, transmitting as a data streams, and buffering and retransmission. Based on uh, acknowledgement, it will retransmit the buffered packet and the session start. And uh, while starting the session, how exactly the connection is establishing and everything we have seen, and the data transfer and the session fully session finish fully acknowledged end to end the handshake mechanism we have seen. And in order delivery, how exactly in order delivery is happening in the TCP and the conjunction control and how we are avoiding this conjunction control, this type of functionalities we have seen. And uh, uh, TCP header, we have discussed 25 TCP header source for destination for sequence number, acknowledgement number, and uh, offset value and reserved TCP flags, window, checksum, and uh, check pointer and some TCP options we have discussed in 
25 decibel data. And uh, TCP data streams, how exactly with the help of TCP data streams, data is delivering end to end, we have seen. And uh, uh, next, to, we have seen like uh, some uh, handshaking me uh, mechanism messages we have like listen, uh, yes, why and send, sync, send, sync, received, and established, and data transfer, and uh, Finishing wait one message, finishing wait this, closing messages, close wait, and closing close. This type of messages we have seen. And TCP data flow control wise, how this window size adjustment will happen in this TCP tuning. And accumulate acknowledgement, how it's exactly occurring. And the reverse packet acknowledgement, uh, duplicate acknowledgement, delayed acknowledgement, adjusting the window size field method. Uh, these methods we have seen in TCP, and window scaling method also we have seen sliding window method. And uh, with respect to congestion control, how exactly congestion control is happening? How to overcome those congestion control with the help of uh, slow start and congestion avoidance, avoidance methods, fast recovery after packet loss, fast retransmit, and uh, fast recovery methods. How exactly we are using selective acknowledgement. Method we are also we are using, and uh, we have seen indirect TCP. How exactly indirect TCP is working, and by splitting TCP layer into two two TCP sublayers, uh, indirect TCP sublayer between the base transceiver and the fixed node, and conventional TCP between the fixed nodes. Like this, we are splitting this TCP layer. As a two sub layers, and we are working uh, for supporting the indirect TCP and the snooping TCP means we know the snoop meaning like it's a secretly some examining something. A TCP connection splits into two sub layers. We know this one, and one connection is between the mobile node and the uh, and the base station and base transceiver. And other is between the base transceiver and the fixed node. Some changes are always made in the base transceiver and some uh, uh, at mobile node. Base transceiver has TCP aware data sync, sync uh, uh, sub layer, TCP aware link sub layer, base transceiver. Means how exactly the snooping mechanism is happening between end to end, we have seen. And uh, today we will discuss about the mobile TCP. How exactly this mobile TCP is working? This mobile TCP method is working. That one. Here, we know that. Uh, just give me one minute. I will have water. Mechanism uh, to reduce the window size to zero. With the help of this mechanism, we can reduce the window size to zero also. In exactly, uh, mobile TCP suggests the splitting of TCP layer into two TCP sub layer and a mechanism to reduce the window size uh, very small. The TCP split is uh, in a asymmetric, 
It's not symmetric order. It's a SM, asymmetric order. The window is set to a uh, very small to print the to prevent the transmission from the player and the mobile node or the fixed node. Means to prevent the uh, mobile node transmission. Uh, we are reducing this window window size to small. When this connection is noticed. Uh, this connection is detected when the split connection does not get packets within a time interval. Means, we, uh, means within that uh, time interval, we are not receiving the packets. Means some disconnection is happening, like this we can see. The window opens and again on getting the packet. Uh, the mobile TCP, uh, the mobile TCP transmission. Transmission end means that is mobile node uh, at the base. It does not use slow start as, as it presumes the packet loss is due to disconnection and not due to congestion or interference. Means we have overcome this congestion and interference mechanisms due to this uh, disconnection only. This uh, uh, interruption is happening now. And data flow control on the wireless part of the network is like an on off control the window size field is used for convention control during transport the window size field specifies the number of bytes the sender is willing to receive and starting from the acknowledgement field value in slow start mechanism what is happening the window size is set to one at the pin and on convention detection the mobile tcp is it is set to zero on detection of packet loss or out of reach from the timeout or duplicate acknowledgement from other end. Which is always happening in the mobile TCP. Exactly with the help of with the help of disconnection with, uh, with the disconnection only that uh, transmission uh, center and receiver is dis, uh, discontinuous. Uh, here the thing is we have overcome the uh, connection and interference mechanisms. And uh, this mobile TCP supervisedly it examines the between two mobile nodes, sublayers between the base transceiver and the fixed node, and conventional TCP between the fixed nodes. One connection is between the mobile node and the base transceiver, and the other between the base transceiver, base transceiver and the fixed node. The base transceiver has an access point at an agent. And for the TCP connection, and it sends and receives the packets to and from the mobile node to the base transceiver. Uh, this TCP method functions in the following manner: means we he have uh, he given some exact uh, methods how it exactly works. Means this particular mobile node sends and receives the packets uh, to other end to other end with the help of TCP layer at the fixed node. The transfer mechanism is very simple here. There is only uh, uh, one hop at the transmitter side and one hop at the receiving end. Like this consideration. I mean, so by sending your transmitting packets from transceiver and receiving the packets at the receiver, uh, one to one, here he is considering. Mobile station is taking at the transmitting side and the destination mobile node uh, is taking at the other end with the help of base transmit. Base transmit uh, transceiver is sending the packet. That is, we are calling it as a fixed TCP. And with the help of a constant rotor, we are sending the packets. With the help of a fixed node uh, routers and all, we are sending to other end. Others, other end also, fixed node TCP will receive those things, and router will uh, receive those first of all. And that the destination fixed node TCP uh, layer will receive and. Uh, Destination based on trans, uh, transceiver uh, layer layer will receive uh, this TCP packets. And finally, used to the mobile destination node. It is the end to end call flow in the TCP in, in mobile TCP mechanism. Here he, he mentioned it technically how exactly this mobile station is giving to uh, 
those who based on Siva TCP layer and the true fixed uh, TCP fixed uh, TCP layer is, is given to routers, constant routers, and routers is sending to other end. And uh, TCP layer at a fixed node sends and receives the package to and from another fixed node. The transfer mechanism is standard here, carried out by multiple hops to the routers. And error detection and correction is done uh, at the data link and physical layer at the base station, uh, base transceiver. The TCP header can be compressed during the transmission between uh, source and uh, transceiver um, between source and destination means we can compress and uh, compress the uh, transmitting side we can uh, decompress the packets of the receiving side uh, how this uh, compression and decompression is exactly working in TCP we are identifying the redundant data fields in packet uh, data transmission we have a byte of other TCP and 20 byte of other in IP we are identifying first uh, some packets we can continue. In other packets, we are identifying the redundant data and we are maintaining the context at the transceiver with the help of uh, uh, static context at the transceiver. We are trying to avoid to send redundant data continuously, like this compressor and decompressor mechanisms works um, between the transmitter and the receiver. And from the Service access point at the mobile node means service access point with, uh, between two layers of how where exactly uh, communication is happening between layers that is service point and data streams are received but not buffered at the, at the transmitter and therefore we can say there is no retransmission from mobile node of the uh, source to the mobile node of the destination. Uh, handover mechanisms when there is handover the pa pa packets per transmission are not popular at uh, source side and no packet nodes ne uh, needs to be uh, transferred to destination mobile node and handover also the socket uh, the socket and uh, its present state uh, want to migrate from source to destination means that end to end connection is constant it won't change and the advantages here we are getting um, mobile it maintains end to end connection between the base and the TCP layer at the other end. Uh, we can say it guarantees reliable packet delivery. This is one advantage, and it takes into account frequent disconnections of the mobile node in wireless network as the most important factor of the data loss. And uh, the disadvantages here we are facing with the help of mobile TCP method, the mobile part of the network is not isolated from the conventional because uh, there is no change in the existing TCP network. Because of that, it's not isolated. Uh, the bandwidth changes are frequent due to frequent settings of Windows size to zero and security risk from the added uh, uh, supervised reports means other ports of low bit errors rates in the wireless network means some uh, some security issues very less kind of security issues uh, security risks we may chance to face here ECP header can be compressed during the transmission between source and the destination mobile node it's a handle Mechanism. This handover mechanism also we have we are using isolated connection between the source uh, MN means source mobile node and the station mobile node advantage of mobile TCP and mobile part of uh, network. These are all the uh, disadvantages of the mobile TCP. So we have a uh, bit of security risks while transmitting from source to destination. Uh, Means these summary points we have discussed like uh, mobile TCP, mobile TCP, uh, 
you know, how it exactly uh, enable between the weather and destination of weather, how it disconnects, and uh, um, with respect to uh, indirect uh, TCP and uh, snooping TCP wise, we have mechanisms here without facing any problems. Window size sets to zero on detection of packet loss are out of reach from the timeout or duplication acknowledgement from and of facility here providing and uh, we have some methods here like, like uh, we have methods, uh, methods for TCP layer transmission for mobile networks so, like uh, we are transmitting a bunch of packets and the window size always uh, uh, adjustable at the uh, receiver end and uh, uh, for fast retransmission and uh, you will face any errors for fast recovery transmission what exactly we are doing this flow start method uh, it always uh, try to overcome the condition in the regions of packet loss in slow start method or uh, slow start method we are using to overcome the condition in the uh, pack, uh, packet loss. In wireless networks, the calls are disconnection and handover and channel error due to interference when mobile node moves from the home network to the file network. Recovery mechanisms used to be used for the packet loss detection. There is a method for recovering lost data called fast retransmit and fast recovery. FRR method. The four phases of the fast uh, retransmit and uh, fast recovery methods are beginning and uh, fast retransmit phase one on three duplicate acknowledgement, fast retransmit, fast recovery phase two. Uh, the mobile node does not. Uh, does not immediately after registering at a, at a foreign node, the mobile node sends three duplicate acknowledgements. The details of actions are all comes under the phases. Here, means some mechanisms by using some mechanisms, we can overcome this uh, uh, this retransmit issues and uh, recovery issues. And TC no, uh, we have one thing. Here to discuss about the the fast retransmitted packets can force conjunction and not reach the destination over the fixed network port. We will discuss about the TCP you know how exactly it works. I open that PBD TCP. Uh, by first off window size for fast retransmission means by adjusting this help of 3CP Reno protocol here exactly what is happening uh, when an acknowledgement is received before the duplicate acknowledgement and retransmission starts then it is called partial acknowledgement procedure after the partial acknowledgement procedure is completed when the lost packet is found by an acknowledgement during the fast recovery phase means uh, we can say fast recovery is by increasing timeout or window size the fast recovery is stopped and the wait constant window size uh, phase sets in your so start states start the uh, sets in the club window and uh, here exactly what is happening the tcp reno method is uh, used in the fast retransmissions and fast recovery is uh, in uh, it uses in always the window is 
inflated for extending size after slashing by a factor of 2 always means it's a factor of 2 only this increasing and decreasing mechanism will happen in the window size. Exactly, um, the DCP Reno protocol is a method of fast recovery by first uh, off size of window by using by first off size of window for fast uh, retransmission followed by fast recovery and after each of uh, retransmissions happen and when an acknowledgement is received before the group acknowledgement and retransmission we are calling it as a partial acknowledgement after the partial acknowledgement completion when the last packet is found by an acknowledgement during the fast recovery phase during the fast recovery phase the fast recovery is stopped and wait constant window size sets in a sets in a uh, sets in exactly and uh, this is exactly how this tcp reno method is working uh, the TCP Reno method is used in the fast retransmission and fast recovery. The window is always fluctuating, is changing, the extending size of reaction in shutter uh, uh, with the help of this factor of two only. And fact, fast recovery ensures that the TCP connection has the data stream to transmit. This is the exact thing is happening in the TCP Reno. And we have New TCP Reno also. The, the disadvantage of uh, TCP Reno is increasing the increasing uh, round of time trip and uh, window size may lead to condensation at the fixed part of the TCP connection. With respect to uh, window size congestion will happen by using this TCP Reno. A uh, new TCP Reno is also same, it exactly works like this whole thing with the help of uh, some advantages we are getting with the help of uh, new Reno is the increasing the number of transmissions and period setting for uh, RTT leads to recovery of multiple packets which may be lost, for example, during handover of methods, mobile nodes, some packets are lost. The, the, the disadvantage of new Reno is increasing the number of retransmissions and period is Period, period settings for the RTT by uh, continuously extending the window size cannot go endlessly. This is what in new Reno is happening. And we have some methods like uh, freezing of uh, transmission TFT methods. TFT methods we will uh, discuss uh, just in two minutes. Give me a small break. In two minutes we will discuss about the TFT methods and how it Exactly happening with the, with the help of max of layer, link layer, that the uh, synchronization between MAC layer, data link layer, transport layer, how exactly is happening. Things we will discuss with the TFT. Uh, two minutes break, just to five minutes we will uh, take the break, and after five minutes we will continue. I'm out freezing up transmission. Time of freezing of transmission. Time of uh, freezing of transmission, shortly we are calling it as TFT. Used in situations where the mobile node faces a long uh, duration of disconnection. Which this TCP wise, we are facing the long disconnections. Uh, then that time we will go with the TFT, time of freezing. transmissions and uh, TCP connections in the time of freezing of transmission protocol exactly uh, how it works we see now the time of freezing transmission functions like uh, a Mac lay a max of layer data link uh, data link agent senses the disconnection 
a little earlier than the TCP layer in a mobile agent data link max of layer means max of layer will identify a little earlier a little earlier than TCP layer this mobile station source mobile station and by using that fixed node TCP it's sending to router with the help of router it's sending to destination fixed node TCP destination base transceiver and finally it's switching to destination mobile world here that the disconnections are firstly identifying the max of layer max of layer and uh, the TCP layer stops sending packets when disconnection is sended by the data link layer here this TCP layer uh, always have some conjunction and therefore after a timeout TCP layer it reaches completely during the timeout period the mobile node may get some data sequences after timeout the TCP transmissions freezes and uh, uh, the TCP and uh, acknowledgements like how exactly acknowledgement data can still receive and transmit through the lower layer with shortable encoding by the header when the uh, data link layer agent senses the establishment of connection, it activates the TCP transmission. Here, the advantages of uh, timeout freezing is that the long interruptions of mobile node are accounted for and uh, independent of the data stream contents. contents. The disadvantage is that the mobile net data link layer needs to be modified by adding the by adding an agent to sense the loss and gain of connection and for making changes in the TCP layer at mobile node to enable lessening the data link layer agent. Selective retransmissions. How exactly it happens? Selective retransmissions. The acknowledgement field value in the data stream received from TCP by a TCP layer transmitter. Uh, TCP gives the next sequence number which is expected by TCP receiver. Let us assume that the field uh, sequence number is uh, happening in this case. Consider the sliding window protocol. Uh, with the help of sliding window protocol, we always work like this. The selective transmission protocol provides for an addition acknowledgement uh, known as selective acknowledgement. A timeout is set as for receiving acknowledgements. And uh, Transaction oriented TCP. Transaction oriented TCP, we will see uh, how exactly works. Transaction oriented TCP protocol uh, is also uh, used in the situations where short messages need to be sent in sequence. And uh, this type of packet delivery takes place after the sync and sync acknowledgement packet exchanges and connection establishment and how the closures after the packet exchanges and TCP receiving end in the form of uh, in the form of streams uh, or base, uh, receiver will receive the data acknowledgements also goes with respect to those streams only and uh, final final acknowledgement method closing the last acknowledgement we have seen these messages previously also these all messages um, we use in the data streams there are no multi-way handshakes. Examples so of sync, sync acknowledgement, as operation between now. Uh, it's a, a transaction-oriented TCP. It's small messages while exchanging itself. There is no uh, multi-way handshakes like uh, sync, sync acknowledgement, as uh, This type of messages won't work. Sequence numbers are for two paid bytes. TTCP means like uh, transaction-oriented TCP. There are no multi-way handshakes in this uh, transaction-oriented TCP. Sequence numbers are for two paid bytes in uh, transaction-oriented TCP instead of one has in the case of TCP. Only immediate acknowledgements means uh, sync and sync the acknowledgements in TCP and cumulative acknowledgements, uh, piggyback acknowledgement is an act is a 
acknowledgement sent by setting the acknowledgement field along with the data stream octets and uh, transaction oriented tcp uh, catches for each state and uh, audit is round two times at the transmitter and receiver a parameter called connection count of the number of bytes letter has the sequence number of the first two byte uh, in a data stream and trans transaction tcp server catches the uh, count, uh, value for each connection and each end restrict duplicate request and replies and the explicit notification uh, we have one method uh, like uh, explicit notification in base uh, transceiver detect the missing packets in the incoming tcp data stream from a mobile node at the time what it will do this base, base transceiver base transceiver gets a duplicate acknowledgement from a mobile node explicit notification method works so that the base transceiver sets an explicit loss notification bit when the uh, data acknowledgement is sent to the mobile node when the mobile node gets the data acknowledgement with the uh, explicit the node enabled bit it retransmits this is because mobile node interprets the uh, explicit node bit from the base base transceiver as signaling of packet loss and alternative to this also uh, explicit node method 2 I means once again it will try to say and base transceiver in you know, place of packet wherever whenever the uh, data acknowledgement corresponding to the buffering missing sequence number the uh, explicit bit is set with the duplicate acknowledgement the mobile node retransmits on receipt of duplicate acknowledgement with the explicit uh, with another alternative is that when the uh, base transceiver receiver end is not able to transmit a packet to the mobile node, it sends an EBS explicit state notification to the sender at the now if we consider how exactly it works over the uh, 3G mobile networks, 2G mobile networks, this, uh, TCP, the characteristics of wireless transmission of 2G, 3G networks are uh, uh, data rates, using the data rates in uplink and downlink and large data rates also needs to be supported. The signals reach the other end with variable delays, variable delays. Delays also occur due to adaptive handling, means uh, due to retransmission repeat and retransmission techniques uh, mobile systems such as G, uh, GSM, Utron and CDMA 2000 have high round trip periods means 2, two uh, seconds up to 2 seconds as compared to the fixed lines in TCP or mobile uh, networks the 2G, 3G header compression is not recommended in 2G, 3G header compression is not recommended and timestamps on the packets uh, help in taking into account where, where the delays are due to the propagation path are due to the reasons means some other regions of these propagations that we are facing in TCP with respect to 2G, 3G networks we don't have support like compressor and uh, decompressor 4G we will have support compressor and uh, decompressor with respect to TCP protocol also uh, maximum transmit units in a fixed part of TCP connection need to be enlarged to decrease the RTP for unit size. This is all happening. And uh, Here, the mechanism we are using to reduce the window size zero is uh, by using transaction oriented TCP. Means with the help of this timeout, uh, timeout phasing of our tran uh, transmission, with the help of this one, we can do this uh, window size. Uh, uh, reduce method. Up 
to this uh, i have covered this uh, uh, transport layer means how exactly this is any questions up to till now And this TCP Reno, new TCP Reno mechanisms are very important. This mobile TCP we have uh, suggest this TCP layer to two TCP supply to reduce the window size to zero. This mobile TCP uh, mobile TCP is always the mechanism we use uh, to reduce the window size to zero. Okay, thank you. And concluding the session with uh, this, uh, we have completed the transport layer up to the transport layer. And uh, from next session onwards, so. Oh, my colleague will continue with the Mac layer. Any questions? Thank you to all.